Today I will start with a famous quote and you will know why this quote is stated at the beginning. It is impossible to live without failing at something unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you have failed by default. It means without failing it is impossible to learn. So far I have understood what is an accelerometer and how accelerometer works. When I get into deeper in studying accelerometer, I found some issues in the accelerometer data, which I figured it out after I plot the data in 2D graph. The behavior of the accelerometer data data is not consistent and my today's topic is to investigate the behavior and realign my motion capture suit architecture. If time permits, later part of this episode, I'll try to determine the tilt using accelerometer data of BNO055. If you have not watched the previous video, please check the description below. You can also visit my Patreon site to read the complete paper and the source code. My motion capture solution is based on inertial motion capture solution to record character or actor's gesture. At first, evaluate the absolute orientation of the sensor and then retarget the outcome of human rigid body in Unreal, which will then animate as like human way. I am using PNO055 absolute orientation sensor to evaluate the orientation of the sensor in 3D space. On building this sensor, I am constantly reviewing and applying new learnings. And based on the learning, I am changing the architecture so that I get the better outcome. And hence, this development Development is broken down in multiple videos under Mocha Building Playlist at YouTube. In this playlist, you can track the progress and the design decisions with justifications. Complete design and source code will be shared with you in my Patreon site. So, without any further delay, let's dive into it now. If you are new to this channel, please consider to give, like, and subscribe. That makes a lot to me. Here is the circuit I am using so far, made out of Raspberry Pi 02W and BNO 055. In this circuit, I have have used circuit python code to extract the data from the sensor and plotted it in 2d graph the circuit is not complicated it is simple to connect using itc protocol after powering up i had to calibrate the device and post that i see a weird behavior on x-axis data you can see the x-axis data is not stable and it is flicking continuously where z-axis and y-axis is stable now if i try to change the orientation and show y-axis downwards x-axis become stabilized. The same can be observed with z-axis as well. This problem is consistent and the disturbance is observed for one direction only. The same disturbance is also observed when I make the device upside down. Initially I thought it could be because of my table vibration or maybe due to some external interference. I tried several options like keeping it on the floor or somewhere where there are no electric disturbance and whatnot. Unfortunately, the the behavior is always same. From the accelerometer concept, I have learned the role of capacitor and the calculation to evaluate the XYZ axis acceleration is different as it doesn't follow the same concept. Probably that's the reason the behavior is not consistent with Y and Z axis. It means the capacitor which is calculating the distance on X axis might have some issue with the voltage or the charge that is impacting the result of the distance calculation on X axis where the y-axis distance calculation is based on overlapping area calculation. Therefore, my doubt went to the power supply module which is flowing to BNO055 from Raspberry Pi. I have changed the power supply and tried several cables and power adapters as per the documentation given in Raspberry Pi 0. Even I tried to connect the circuit with the computer using USB power cable but there is no change in the behavior, it is always same. I also thought there might be some problem with the same sensor which I am using. I tried several other BNO055 sensors but the behavior is always same for all the sensors with Raspberry Pi 02W. None of the experiments or trial really didn't work for me. If I stick to the accelerometer basic then obvious culprit would be the capacitor which measures the distance of the suspended mass disbursement on X axis and hence I thought of trying other Raspberry Pi model at the same time but unfortunately all the Raspberry Pi 0 0 to W device's behavior turned out to be the same. This is kind of showstopper at this moment and honestly I do not want to hang up on and hence I tried different Raspberry Pi module to confirm my doubts on the power supply. This time I used Raspberry Pi 4 model B. It is a computer similar like Raspberry Pi 0 to W but more powerful. The GPIO pins configuration
functions are same, that means nothing to be done to set it up. I followed the same process to configure the Pi like Pi Zero. Activation I2C, install Python, install circuit Python with Adafruit packages, connect the wires, same like Raspberry Pi and so on. If you want to know more detail on how to set it up, please check the video. I have given the link in the description. I have also given the link of the complete paper as well. Here comes my first breakthrough. The behavior with the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B is not same like Pi Zero. After calibrating the sensor, when I see the output, I could see some consistency in the result. The x-axis data is quite stable, although there are some disturbance, but the outcome is steady. This proves that the sensors are perfect and behaving the way it is supposed to. After I read some topic on the I2C connectivity, I found a term called pull-up resistors. My doubt is on the capacitor, which means the x-axis distance calculation is based on the capacitance. I thought the pull-up register might be a fix to the problem. Honestly, this concept I don't know. I need to know more about that and the working principle as well. I will explore it later. I also read BNO055 has got internal pull-up registers and we barely do need any. Before I jump to the conclusion and fix my circuit by introducing pull-up register and how to fix it well, I thought of comparing the raw data and the numbers which come out from the sensor. So I have printed both the modules x-axis acceleration data at the same time. I have commented out the TCP transmission to the server for 2D graphs plotting and printed the data on the console. As I wanted to compare the data, here I have added two BNO055 sensor on the same breadboard and one of them I have connected with Raspberry Pi 0 and another one I have connected Raspberry Pi 4. As the platform of the sensors are fixed, calibration process is same and should take the same time. Now if I plot the data of the x-axis of the accelerometer only, you can see the difference. Pi zero data is weird and the noise is there almost every second or third reading and the difference is almost 1.5 to 2. Now at the same time if I see the data of Raspberry Pi 4, it is completely different. The spikes every third reading is not there and the behavior is mostly consistent. This is scaring me, which one to trust? I can write to forum and look for answers and fix my connection but honestly I am not very keen to invest my time on that at this moment. If you have any suggestions please do let me know in the comments. To conclude the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B's accuracy and to evaluate the consistency of the both Pi module sensor output, I was needed a different module out of Pi family to test the data. I came across a lot of YouTube videos where people have tested BNO055 with Arduino and showed up the consistent result. Therefore, as an option, I tried Arduino Nano to test the results. I'll talk about the connectivity and the setup of Arduino Nano in a while. Before that, let me show the result first. After plotting Arduino Nano's data in 2D graph, here I can see the data looks pretty good and which is almost similar like Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, but with less noise. You can notice here a small difference in X and Y data, which is supposed to be zero in the steady condition. If I check the level on the, my table, I could clearly see my table's y-axis is little tilted, where x-axis is properly leveled. After I properly level y-axis and x-axis, I could see the data is pretty consistent and as per expectation. Now let me print the raw output data of the x-axis and compare it with Y4 model B. On keeping both the output side by side, I could see the behavior between Arduino Nano and Pi4 model B is the same. However, there is a small disturbance in Pi 4 which is not surprising but we could easily filter those out later. Now it's time to decide which one to choose and proceed. As I am not very fussy about the product, I am okay if the purpose is solved with Arduino. However, I need something industry grade which I can evaluate later. It's time to compare the products. The main difference between them is Arduino is microcontroller board while Raspberry Pi is a microprocessor based mini computer. The microcontroller on the Arduino board contains the CPU, RAM and ROM. The additional hardware on Arduino board is for power supply, programming and I.O. connectivity. Raspberry Pi has all features of a computer with a processor, memory, storage, graphics driver, connector on the board. Raspberry Pi needs an operating system to run. Arduino doesn't need any operating system. 
all I need is a binary of the compiled source code. Raspberry Pi comes with a fully functional operating system called Raspberry Pi OS. Previously, it is known as Raspbian OS. Although Pi can use different operating systems, Linux is preferable by Raspberry Pi Foundation. Arduino does not have any operating system. I just need a firmware instructing the microcontroller what task to do. The clock speed of Arduino is 16 megahertz, while the clock speed of Raspberry Pi is around 1.2 gigahertz. Raspberry Pi is good for developing software application using Python, while Arduino is good for interfacing sensor and controlling LEDs and the motors. This doesn't mean we cannot connect sensors and LEDs to Raspberry Pis, which you can see that I have already done it. To encourage learning programming by controlling hardware, the Raspberry Pi consists of 40 pins GPIO through which you can connect different electronic components like LEDs, buttons, sensors, motors, etc. On Arduino, the GPIO is called digital I.O. like input output and analog input. The power requirement of Raspberry Pi and Arduino are completely different. Even though they both are powered by USB like micro USB or USB type C for Raspberry Pi and USB type B for Arduino, the Raspberry Pi needs more current than Arduino. So I need a power adapter for Raspberry Pi but Arduino can be powered up from USB port from the computer or USB power bank. Power interruption for Raspberry Pi may cause damage to the hardware, software or applications. In case of Arduino, power interruption doesn't matter. That means Raspberry Pi must be shut down properly before disconnecting the power. Arduino uses Arduino IDE for developing the code while Raspberry Pi can use Python, Eclipse or any other IDE that supports by the Linux. I can also program using the terminal itself which with any text editor like Vim, VI and so on. Using the open source hardware and the software files of Arduino, I can essentially create my own Arduino board where this is not possible with Raspberry Pi as it is not open sourced. The cost of original Arduino Nano is around $30, I mean Australian dollars. There are several clones of Arduino which are available are for less than $4. Coming to Raspberry Pi, the original Raspberry Pi was around $35 to $50 but the latest Raspberry Pi 4 Model B is available in different price points like 50, 65, 75, 90 and so on. And that is depends on the memory configuration. If you want to know more about this comparison, please check the description below. So to decide between the two, first I should know what I want to do in my project. My requirement is very simple. I just want to capture the sensor's absolute orientation data and transmit it to Unreal for retargeting. From the comparison, I can understand that Arduino is good for the repetitive task, such as collecting the sensor data, opening the garage door, switching the lights on or off, reading the temperature, control a motor and so on. While Pi is good for performing multiple tasks, driving complex complicated robots, playing videos, connect to internet, interface cameras and so on. For example, if I want to develop an application where I want to monitor humidity and temperature from a sensor and display the results on an LCD, then Arduino Nano can be used to implement this. But at the same time, if I want to monitor the humidity and the temperature from sensor, send an email with the results, check and compare the reading with the weather report online and also display the results on LCD, then Raspberry Pi is the right choice. Coming to the programming aspect of both the modules, Arduino is primarily on C, C++ where Pi is about Python. However, in Pi, C, C++ is also done. As my programming requirements are very much limited and primarily about computing, I don't think Arduino has a limiting factor on that. In short, Arduino is used for simple project and quick electronics prototyping, while Raspberry Pi is used for some complicated projects. When I have done the balance scorecard based on my requirements, so far I could see both Arduino and Raspberry Pi are almost equivalent to use in my project. But one of my requirements is the price. Raspberry Pi 0 to W was my preferred choice but the latest outcome is showstopper. And hence, I will change my architecture for the time being to shift to Arduino Nano and then later I will revisit the architecture. So far the concept and other mathematical requirements are not changing, therefore my next build will be using Arduino Nano and later I will upgrade the board to ESP32 to introduce the Wi-Fi side of the requirement. 
As I have got the direction to use Arduino Nano, let me look at the Nano functionalities. The Arduino Nano is smaller, complete, breadboard friendly board based on 80 Mega 328. It lacks DC power jack and works with a mini B USB cable instead of standard one. Arduino Nano is equipped with 30 male input output headers, which can be programmed using Arduino Nano software integrated development environment. It is common to all Arduino boards and running both online and offline. The board can be powered through a type b mini usb cable or a 9 volt battery or 6 to 20 volt unregulated external power supply through pin 30 or 5 volt regulated external power supply to pin 27 the power supply is automatically selected to the higher voltage source it has 32 kilobyte memory and also 2 kilobyte is used for the bootloader along with 2 kilobyte of sram and 1 kilobyte of eprom the price i paid for nano is 36 or the Arduino Nano connectivity with BNO055 sensor is similar like Raspberry Pi 02W as both the scenario I am using I2C. The concept of the I2C is same which I have already described in my previous video. You can find the video from the description below. From the diagram you can easily make out the connectivity. The red wire is going to the power line, the black wire is going round, the green wire is STA, the yellow wire is for SCL. To program and extract the data from the sensor, I have downloaded the ID or integrated development environment from Arduino website. Before I upload my first sketch to Arduino Nano, I need two libraries. The driver for the Adafruit BNO055 breakout is based on Adafruit Unified Sensor Libraries. I have already downloaded these two libraries from the Tool Manage Libraries sections of Arduino IDE. These two libraries are Adafruit BNO055 and Adafruit Unified Sensors. Here is the code which I am using using to extract the data. The Adafruit Unified Sensor Library provides a common interface and data types for any supported sensors. It defines some basic information about the sensor and returns the standard units of a specific type and scale for each supported sensor type. It provides a simple abstraction layer between my application and the actual sensor hardware, allowing me to drop in any comparable sensor with only one or two lines of code to change in my project. Essentially the constructor sends the function to read sensor data and get information about the sensor are defined in the base Adafruit sensor class. This is important and useful for two reasons. I can use the data right away because it's already converted to SI units that I understand and can compare rather than meaningless values like 0 to 1023. Because SI units are standardized in the sensor library, I can also do quick sanity check when working with new sensors or draw drop in any comparable sensor if I need better sensitivity or if a lower cost unit becomes available. At first, I have to include all the necessary header of I2C and sensors. I have given a polling rate 100 milliseconds and the output of the data will be written in serial port with baud rate of 115,200. The gate temp helper returns the current ambient temperature in degrees Celsius and can read via the function call. It is recommended that BNO055 use an external crystal as the clock source whenever possible. It provides better timing accuracy than the internal RC clock. The gate vector function accepts a single parameter vector type which indicates what type of three axis vector data to return. The vector type field can be one of the following values. Vector magnetometer, vector gyroscope, vector Euler, vector accelerometer, vector linear accelerations, vector gravity. For my initial test, I am using vector accelerometer. I am printing the data in comma separated in the serial port which I can read it from the Arduino IDE. To visualize the data, Arduino IDE gives ready-made serial plotter which can be found in tools serial plotter. The initial plot of the data is steady but I can see y axis is not zero. Here you can see a small legend given of the data. When I see the level of my table, it's not properly leveled. If I tilt y axis a little to level it properly, y axis data automatically becomes zero which is an expected result.
On keeping a small paper and a scale underneath the sensor, I could see the data on y-axis and x-axis is absolutely zero. Now let's try to see the acceleration behavior keeping two axes steady. This is the problem statement from where we started studying the accelerometer. If I keep my two axes y and z steady and applying force on x-axis, I could see the acceleration due to the deforming force on x-axis giving me some kind of a vibration. The same thing I can apply it one y axis and z axis accordingly this is common behavior and the explanation is already given in my previous video and this behavior i also observed in raspberry pi as well the z axis value is consistently shown around 9.8 meter per second square which is also explainable and it is due to gravity the same can be observed in z and y axis respectively on changing the orientation the whole thing is logical now and self-explanatory which can be evaluated from the accelerometer concept. I'm gonna keep this sensor like that for 24 hours to see any deviation happens or any drift causing the change in the value of z-axis or not. I also need to check the behavior before and after the calibration. To do that I can either plot calibration data in the graph or print the value. Both the serial plotter and the data cannot be printed in Arduino at the same time. Unfortunately I cannot customize the default serial plotter of Arduino ID. I can add more data in the serial print by adding more commas and more values in it but it will be very messy therefore i need to add more softwares to switch on and off some attributes of the visualization let me keep that for the next video in the next video i'll improve the serial plotter visualizations calibrations and determine the tilt based on the accelerometer meanwhile let me digest what i have done today and why i have done that this is a simple change i made in the architecture without disturbing the core till i come back with next video let me research more on the change if you know the answer and have some suggestions please do not hesitate to pop it in the comment below on that note i am finishing this video here please stay tuned for such interesting topic and the solution till then stay safe and take care thank you for watching